one of those games and think, wow, that game would be really great if it had a second print run where they polished things up. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Quest of the Lost Pixel. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review on a special Game Crafter Spotlight, where they pay me, yeah, I bet pay to do this, every single month to do a series of videos on one specific Game Crafter game. And this month, it is Quest for the Lost Pixel, which, by the way, you check out the link down below. This is by Peter Jank from GBF Games. It is for one to four players, ages 10 plus, taking about two hours to play. And in Quest for the Lost Pixel, this is a game with just an insane amount of cards. Just cards upon cards upon cards upon cards upon cards and more cards and more cards and more cards and more cards and there's like seven or eight hundred cards in this roguelike dungeon style game where you are going to be going through a legend of zelda esque dungeon but in this dungeon there are 10 floors and you're trying to make your way down or up i'm not really sure which way the stairs are going to the final floor, and then you find this one magical card, and then you go through a teleporter, and boom, you win the game. In theory, it's a very, very difficult game. If you want to see exactly how the game plays, I did a gameplay video, which is either up here or up there. I don't know. It's somewhere around here. You could probably figure it out. You're pretty good at that sort of thing. But this is a review. Just my thoughts. So let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, rule booklet. Not particularly good. Like, this rule booklet really annoyed me it, it has you jumping from place to place you have to go back to look for some various different rules and it's not exactly where you think it's going to be and it's just it could really use a coat of polish like i think if it if someone sat down with this for say like two hours and just rearranged things move things here to there this could be a much better rule booklet but as it stands now it's not a terrible rule booklet it's not a deal breaker but it will give you those thoughts every once in a while like am i doing this right i'm not quite sure also, one of the big, biggest issues that I have with this game is it's insanely difficult and not in a good way. I love really difficult games where it's like, ah, oh, I think if we would have done this or that or the other thing, I think we could have pulled it off at the end. You know, like one of those a game like Ghost Stories, where it's like, oh, we were so close and, and we could have got it. This one feels much more like dumb luck. And when you play it at the higher player counts, it's even more pronounced because there's a power creep here. So as you progress through the dungeon, you're going to go to different levels. And once you go to different levels, you're going to get different leveled items. But you can't actually use those items until you level up your character yourself. Now, if you're playing solo or uh, two players to a certain extent, this isn't a huge deal because you'll you'll get more turns however if you're playing at the higher player let's, let's pretend you're playing at four you know someone might have already gotten to level two before you even get your turn because it's all randomly generated you know if someone just happened to flip over you know the passageway to get to the next level but boom you're on level two and, it, and god forbid if someone actually shuffled you know you shuffle it again and then oh two turns later someone gets it and you might be you might take your first turn and you might already be on level three. Now, is that probably going to happen? No, but could it happen? Yeah, if you play this game enough, it's probably going to happen if you played it at four players. And what I'm getting here is, yes, the loot gets better as you progressively get to the higher levels, but the monsters also get bigger and they get better. Now, you can evade monsters. You have some tricks up your sleeve to help you out. And the character powers feel pretty good, as we'll talk about in the pros. But, you know, once you get up to those higher levels, like, you'll be at level 7, level 8, and you'll be rocking level 3 or 4 loot, and it's just like, you can get, you can essentially get one shot in some instances, because the monsters get super duper powerful. Now, that being said, that is going to be some people's style of games. This game honestly feels akin to, like, a Demon Souls or a Lost Souls or something like that, where it's just stupidly difficult at some points. But then at other points, it's like gravy trade with biscuit reels. If you just roll in good numbers, it just feels swingy. And I feel like a little bit more playtesting and balancing, especially at the higher player counts, would have been great here. It's by no means a deal breaker, though. I'm supposed to be critical. That's a review. That's how we do this. Any other cons that I have with this? This is not the ideal box for this game. I know it has tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of cards. But really, there's got to be a much better and more efficient way to organize this with some sort of box insert. And that's the other thing. This 
setting this game up, you really don't want to mix this game up. It's a little bit of an annoying setup because you need to have level one treasures, level one monsters, level two treasures, level two monsters, level three treasures, level three monsters, level four treasures, all the way up to 10. So essentially you're going to have roughly 25 piles of cards around you. I mean, you don't need all of them, but you're going to have to get to them. And if they get mixed up, it's kind of annoying. And I just wish there was a better organization system in play. Now, granted, this is a game crafter game, but that's what I'm getting to here. I feel like this one, it's a solid enough game because let's just move on to the pros because it's mostly pros here, even though I am focusing on the cons because that's how you do a review. It's a lot of fun. It's easy to learn for them. Let me rephrase that. It's easy to teach. Once you learn how to play it, it's easy to teach because it's really quite a simple game. You move around, encounters happen, you fight a monster, maybe you get loot, you draw cards, and read the text on the card. And that is a huge chunk of this game is just read the text on the card and do what it does. And there's just unique, cool things that happen throughout the dungeon. And they did a great job catching this. This feels like an NES style old school game and if you're in the market for that a roguelike style game i'm not going to bury the lead here this is a game that i can recommend however back to the, the, the fact like this could use a second print run this costs like 115 dollars right now and this is not a 115 dollar game and i hate to say that because that's a very subjective thing but if you go on a miniature market right now miniature market uh cool stuff inc like look at the amount of games you can get for 110 dollars like, it's just a really hard sell at that price point, especially when the rules aren't great. And how great are the rules not? Because I've mentioned that a couple times. You're like, Bauer, just fill in the blanks. I'll give you two prime examples. As part of this Game Crafter Spotlight series of videos, I do a setup video. And I was super annoyed because I did it wrong. And I didn't do it wrong. But, uh, here's the thing. Here's what I do in these videos. Don't tell anybody. I read the setup and then I do it. Like, I just, all right, this is what it says that I do on the setup. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I do that. I do that in the video. It's super simple. So the fact that I screwed up the setup is on them because there's crucial information that was not included in the setup. And if you don't have information in the setup, that is not a great start for your game. And it's a minor thing. I was supposed to take out two particular cards, but that needs to be in there. And then you're jumping back and forth. I'll, I'll give you another one. I shoot a gameplay video as part of this. And I was so nervous to shoot a gameplay video. I watched two videos of the designer of this game playing the game. And I read the rules like three times. Just because I was so unsure about some of these minor ticky tacky rules and the organization. The way it flowed. And it's just, it's a rule book that desperately needs another set of eyes. And to be redone in my personal opinion. Not terrible. But for a game like this that I think could be... A lot of people's like really one of their one of their top games because it scratches an itch. What it tries to do, it does very well, and I think that's the lead. If you're in the market for a NES style rogue style game, you take a hero, go through a dungeon, kill stuff, level up your loot, chuck dice. This is a game that I think you're going to enjoy. I think it's one of my son's probably top 10 games right now. He had a blast going through the dungeon. He loved looking at all the different monsters, the different characters. Uh, there's a good variety of heroes. and They have different things. Uh, there's, there's loot throughout. There's tons of loot. There's artifacts in here, which are just like massively powerful. And I will say, that's the other thing. If you happen to stumble on an artifact, your game's going to be exponentially easier. And if you don't stumble onto it until later in the game, it's going to be really hard. Once again, that's just like a little balancing issue. You know, it's just one of those things where it's like this could, I feel like this could have been play tested a little bit more, uh, especially the different player counts. But now I'm just beating a dead horse here. But Quest for the Lost Pixel, overall, I still think it's a good game. Final grade on this one, I'll give it a seven. It's good. I think it could potentially go to an eight with a second print run. I think it is a great game stuck inside of a good game's body, if that makes sense. I don't know. There you go. Quest for the Lost Pixel, designed by Peter Jake. I'm going to keep this one. It's enjoyable. My son really liked it. And I know there's expansions as well, which just add more cards. But quite honestly, you don't really need more cards. There's an insane amount of cards. Unless you're playing this, you know, on a bi-weekly basis or something like that, I think it'll be good with just in the base box in case you're wondering about whether you should pull the trigger on that. I'd say try the game first and then check it out. But there you go. Quest for the Lost Pixel. If this looks like my cup of tea, be sure to check out that Game Crafter link down below. Also, in the comments below, let me know if you could bring back one NES game from a, from the NES era, Nintendo Entertainment System for you youngins, 
Um, what game would it be? Man, what game would I want? I would like a... This is a hard question. One of the hardest questions I've ever asked in my life. Uh, Legend of Zelda game. I think it'd be cool. Like, what if you took a game like this and just made it Legend of Zelda with randomly generated dungeons and stuff like that? That'd be super cool. Yeah, you could pretty much retheme and reskin this game, and that would be, that'd be pretty on the nose. But let me know in the comments below. What is your game of choice that you'd like to see from the NES brought to board game fashion? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.